Hey there, welcome to Ask Dial number 64. Hope you're doing really, really well. In this episode, we have, I believe there are five emails that we're gonna go over and uh, a question that came in via Instagram as well. Before we start, as always, nothing here is medical advice, just general thoughts and comments that I hope will be helpful to anyone tuning in. Uh, particularly, of course, the person that sent us the question. So um, let's get right into it. If I, I just before, I, uh, just to make sure I don't forget, I, I want to start with this uh, question that came in via Instagram because I haven't copy pasted that into our, the document. We we're going to take a look at it in a second. So this is a question from Fernando, and uh, and he's he's contributed with a question in in the past, and he now says the following: uh, Coach, I hope you're doing good. I have a question for you. I'm sleeping again, but how do I recover from memory loss? In cognitive impairment, I feel slow and dumb all the time, like I'm not what I used to be. So um, thanks, thanks for now so much for, for this question. And um, it is uh, a, a pretty common one, uh, meaning um, uh, if, again, as I said in the beginning, if, if anybody out there, if you have a concern about your health, talk to your doctor, that said, it is actually very common that you feel really kind of slow, foggy, tired when you are starting to sleep better. Now, why is that? You may think, you know, you'd 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 assume that as you're starting to sleep better, sleep more, sleep longer, that you'll feel more refreshed, you know, that you'll think better, etc. And that that does happen, but it can take a little while. And why is it that you often have this kind of Paradoxically, you feel more tired when you start sleeping better. Well, the answer, as it almost always is in the sleep universe, has to do with hyper arousal. Hyper arousal is this emotional state that is like a, kind of like a, a heightened. It's like an anticipatory state. We're like waiting for something to happen. It can be something that's a bit scary, like we're waiting for a big presentation tomorrow or we're waiting for something positive, like we're going to get married or it's going to be Christmas or something. But our, our our minds is like looking out for something. And when it comes to insomnia, the mind is kind of looking out to keep us safe from sleeplessness. So it's kind of this diffuse thing. It doesn't know exactly what it's what it's scared of or looking out for it, but that's, that's in, 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 a, in a nutshell, that is hyperarousal. Now, when you have trouble sleeping, the hyperarousal is often driven by confusion. Like you don't understand what's going on. You're kind of puzzled or you're worried or anxious or something like that. And then you start educating yourself. You understand, okay, I understand what's been happening to me. I understand what insomnia is. It's kind of demystified. Okay. No, no, um, it's, it's not strange or bizarre anymore, and you start sleeping better, and, and that you start sleeping better thanks to the work you've done and the hyperarousal going down. So that's why you start sleeping better. But guess what? That hyperarousal, when you've been in that state of like heightened alertness, that has in fact kept you from noticing how tired you are. You know, it's kind of like, when you're playing a basketball game, like you're really playing, you know, it's intense. You're like passing the ball, dribbling, shooting, whatnot. And if somebody asks you like right, right in that moment, like, are you tired? You'd be like, no, 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 let's keep going. I'm not tired because your blood is pumping. Your, you know, adrenaline is going like you, you're, you're in the game. You're like, you don't feel how tired you are. But then someone says, okay, let's take a break. You sit down and you're like, whoa, now I feel it. I'm really tired. Same thing with, with insomnia. When you have less hyper arousal, you start sleeping better but you also notice how tired you are. You know, you feel the fatigue, you know, you feel it, you know, full, full on. So it's very common to have this kind of brain fog, physical fatigue, tiredness as you start sleeping better. So it, it's, it's actually a, a good, it's a welcome sign. But uh, if you just kind of keep going, enjoy your life and like as much as you can, then as you have slept better for a longer period of time, that, uh, that fatigue will go away. So um, yeah, Ricard, uh, Fernando, I, mean, I want to say uh, thanks so much for that question. And with that being said, we will move on here. Uh, let's do a screen share so that anybody that's tuning in via uh, YouTube here can um, can check it out. And we'll start at the top here from, with a question from Salima. Came in a couple of days ago. Let's read it. Dear Daniel. I have been an avid watcher of your videos for almost around a year now. 
they've helped me gain control over my sleep and they've helped me gain confidence over my sleep. I'm forever indebted to you for your help and work. So thank you. Thank you, Salima. You know, I'm doing the easy part here. I'm just kind of preaching and sharing and you've done the hard work of implementing things, you know, uh, working with your thoughts, etc. So well done. However, I have a problem. Maybe I was prescribed mirtazapine for sleep a few months ago when I had a terrible bout of sleeplessness and anxiety. It helped me tons, uh, but I never got off it as my psychiatrist told me to keep taking it if it helps. So naturally, I transferred all my sleep confidence onto it. Then I came across your videos and slowly I reduced dosage. But I would get sleeplessness and I would take it again. So I never really quit. Ever since quarantine began, I initially slept great with a peace of mind of not needing to wake up early, etc. I would have one or two bad nights, but I'd manage to sleep fine the next night. All was well, but mind you, I do still take pills. Anywho, for the past few days, I've not been able to fall asleep until the wee hours of the morning around four or five. Don't know why, I'm not as much as anxious as I am frustrated. I was fixing my routine and I was doing great the past few weeks, falling asleep around two, waking up at 11 every day, uh, keeping my waking time consistent. But these past few days, I just can't sleep until pretty late. I upped my dosage, but that too hasn't worked much. What's bothering me uh, is it, it's not even anxiety, I'm just irritated. I don't have much to do. I also have fibromyalgia, which means I have chronic pain in my neck, arms, hands, especially at night. So when I wake up in the middle of the night, I think of getting out of bed, I don't want to. My arms and shoulders are set of ache and I just want to keep lying down with my eyes closed. And it's not like I'm not even sleepy, I'm pretty sleepy, but I just can't fall asleep and I can't understand why. And yes, unfortunately I'm still taking pills. What must I do? do looking forward to response video hopefully many thanks salima a anytime salima uh, and um here we are doing the video reply of course so let's start let's start from the beginning and um i'm gonna kind of uh go go over this almost like line by line and um and by the way one thing that i'm thinking more and more about is like uh, how we as humans often are like hard on ourselves we kind of judge ourselves and we're in the insomnia world that often comes across is like, I'm doing all these things, why am I not doing better? That's kind of like you're pressuring yourself. And that that pressure, that tension doesn't help with your sleep. So always, always, always try to be kind to yourself. Even if you don't see the progress you're looking for, then, then just don't blame yourself or pressure yourself. Try to be kind to yourself. And the reason I'm bringing up that now is that I'm gonna be talking about things that I think could be helpful to you and if you, you know, think of it as like, oh, dang, I should do that. I should do that. Why am I not doing that? Et cetera. That's not helpful. Just think of it as like, okay, good. I, I will consider that. If I haven't done that, that's okay. You know, just for everyone that I'm replying to here and always, always try to be kind to yourself. And um, so that said, so we're going to start here. Um, um, you said, uh, we start here. I've been an avid watcher of your videos. Um, they've helped me gain control over my sleep. And, you know, again, this may sound like nitpicking here, but this is very important. Um, the, the main thing that is that I always want to um, convey is that insomnia happens when we're trying to control something that cannot be controlled. Sleep is a passive process. Uh, good sleep only happens when we're not trying to sleep or trying to control it. So um, uh, just, you know, I just want to point out that phrase, like when, whenever you're in that mindset of like, I have to try to control it. I have to do more things to control it. That always leads to more trouble sleeping. So if you can move in the direction of like, I don't have control over it. And the less I try to control it, the better it gets. That's a big, 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 big step in the right direction. All right, now um, I was prescribed mirtazapine for sleep a few months ago. It helped me tons, but I never got off of it as my psychiatrist told me to keep taking it if it helps. So let's stay there a while and talk about medication. So medica you know, sleep is produced by our bodies. When, when the body is sleepy, it needs sleep and it doesn't, uh, and there's nothing keeping it from, from happening. So this is kind of classic gas and break, meaning the gas is the, the part of our sleep system, our body that makes us want to sleep. It's sleepiness, you can call it, or you can call it sleep debt, or you can call it sleep pressure. You can call it sleep drive. Uh, it's only produced by wakefulness. So the, the only thing that can make us sleepy is staying awake. 
And uh, you know that said, there's a break in our sleep system too, and that's that's the break that's called hyperarousal, which we just talked about when we answered uh, Fernando's uh, question. So hyperarousal is that state of like heightened attention, could be anxiety, could be uh, could be excitement, uh, could be fr could be frustration, or it could be like puzzlement too. All that is it, it it causes hyperarousal. That's the break in our sleep system. So medications cannot make you sleep. Uh, nothing can do that except again our sleep drive. But medications can uh, reduce that hyperarousal by by two ways. So another thing that's important to know is that emotions like hyperarousal, anxiety, sadness, anger, etc. No medications can change those. The only thing that can change or produce uh, emotions are our thoughts. So how can a medication make you less hyperaroused? Well, there's two ways. Either a medication can make you so um, um, kind of sedated uh, or medicated, you know, meaning it can it, it can affect the the functioning of your brain to a point where it cannot really form complex thoughts, and then those 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 thoughts that produce anxiety cannot really be formed. It's similar to somebody who drinks so much alcohol that they just cannot really think, therefore they cannot really become anxious, and uh, that's one way, you know, medications can can affect uh, emotions and the other ways belief like when we take a medication and we, and we think this will help me that thought can reduce hyperarousal so that's one of the two ways medications can reduce hyperarousal and then facilitate the body's own uh, sleep drive to kick in now the, the the reason i always talk so much about it is that when you start thinking in terms of like oh I, this medication is making me sleep it's you're you're on very slippery territory because what will happen is, it, you know your your confidence will erode. Like you start thinking that you can't sleep on your own, and then when that, when you really get into trouble is when you're taking a medication and then you don't sleep and you, for some reason you don't sleep, then your your mind goes, oh my gosh, this medication is no longer working. I have to increase the dosage, and then either it doesn't help, then you're like, oh my gosh, this is really bad or it, it does seem to help, again, it does the same thing. It kind of like you, you believe in it or it makes you really sedated and you have less hyperarousal and you sleep better for a while, but then you again end up having trouble sleeping. So that's, it's a very slippery slope. So um, so that's kind of a little bit on medications. And I've really, again, this is my belief, you know, everybody has talked to your doctor, but my belief is that medications for insomnia really shouldn't, I, I think they should never be used at all. But if they are used, they should definitely not be used as needed. Because what happens if if you say, if you tell somebody like take this only if you need to sleep, then it reinforces the idea that you needed to sleep. Because let's say you're not taking anything for a while, and then you're like, now I'm not sleeping good at all. I slept very very little, but I'm not going to take it. I don't really want to take it. Then you wait another night, and then you finally kind of desperate. You're also sleepy. You're super tired. You take it, and you're like, oh no, I slept, and that. That really creates when you use something as needed, you really start seeming like you need it, you know, because of because it's prescribed that way. So I think when it comes to medications, uh, it is it is not hard at all to get to a place where you sleep really well if you take the same dose, the same time every single night, like a robot, because then the medication becomes a non-factor uh, because the very the variation in your sleep you you realize has nothing to do with the medication. It's kind of like not even in the picture because you take it like a robot, or you don't take medications at all. You know both those work really well. But if somebody's like taking something here and there only when they need it, they kind of change the dose, go up and down, then it becomes very very hard to get past insomnia because that belief that you can't sleep on your own, that you need something from the outside to sleep, becomes very hard to let go of. So, and then as Selena said here, I transferred all my sleep confidence onto it. And now um, as we go forward here, Selena mentioned something interesting, which is she started sleeping much better when um, quarantine began, which is interesting because I've, you know, I've seen so much of both. Some people have a lot of trouble sleeping with quarantine. Some people sleep better. So it's interesting how that can go both ways. And now, uh, for the past days, I've not been able to fall asleep until the wee hours in the morning. And before that, we heard that um, ever since quarantine began, I initially slept great with the peace of mind of not needing to wake up early. So that, when I read that, I'm thinking, okay, so Salima felt better, she was more relaxed, and she she didn't need to wake up early, so her sleep times probably drifted towards 
you know, later. She probably wake, woke up later and later, which means that when you wake up later, you're also going to be sleepy later. And this is very common. This is what happened uh, to, um, uh, um, who was this? This was uh, Luke, who I talked to uh, in Talking Song in the most recent episode. So I'm thinking like Salima went, you know, her sleep time shifted towards the morning. And then for the past days, I've not been able to fall asleep until the wee hours of the morning, which is very expected because the sleep, the whole sleep phase has been shifted. But then uh, Salima goes, I don't know why. I think this is the reason. I don't think there's any mystery there. Uh, but when you don't know why, it's, it, it, it's frustrating, you know, it's annoying, um, especially since Lena said, I was fixing my routine, I was getting great in the past few weeks, so then, it's, then it seems especially odd, frustrating that you weren't falling asleep, and uh, and then also this kind of self, kind of blaming yourself can come come in a little bit here, I was, I was doing everything and still this happened, it's kind of like you frustrated, you kind of put pressure on yourself, uh, and again, these past few days, I just can't sleep until it's pretty late, I upped the dosage, which was what I talked about before. That classically happens. You can't fall asleep. You think the medication was helping. You increase the dosage. It doesn't It doesn't work. So then that becomes increasingly frustrating because it, again, seems like nothing's working. What's bothering me is that it isn't even anxiety. I'm just irritated. And that's nothing strange or unusual there either. That hyperarousal that causes insomnia can be caused by anxiety or frustration or puzzlement just like confusion or excitement so uh, irritation is one of the common reasons why we have insomnia so that's also nothing strange there and then we have uh Slima mentions you have fibromyalgia which has chronic pain waking up um and doesn't want to get out of bed because of the pain etc and i would say this when you have something uh, like that something that causes pain then that's what's called a circumstance something that triggers uh, less sleep in its own that we can't do anything about. And the best thing to do to do when it comes to circumstances is accepting it that yes, this circumstance is going to disrupt my sleep, but I can't do anything about it. So therefore I have to not even, not even consider it. That's just a factor that's going to disrupt my sleep. I'm going to have to accept some sleep disruption because of that, but that doesn't mean I can sleep better, but just like the more you focus on the circumstance and try to like fight reality, try to change something that you cannot change, then, um, then you end up in trouble. I'm not saying you can't get better from fibromyalgia, but just in this example of sleep, it's something that's, you know, uh, that we can't uh, modify, in the, at least in the short term. So it's good to not focus too much on it. Um, all right. So it's not, uh, I'm not even sleepy. I'm pretty sleepy, but I just can't fall asleep. I can't understand why. So I think we already um, have uh, kind of talked about everything really this probably happened because you're the reason you haven't slept well lately is probably because your sleep time shifted and then you became frustrated because you couldn't fall asleep and then that classic insomnia spiral starts where you're like you don't sleep well you're wondering why that puzzlement makes you sleep worse and then you kind of try more and you sleep worse etc 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 so uh i i think um what must i do is the question here i think there's nothing um nothing at all less unusual strange or about this uh, Salima. the most important thing always is understanding and i hope going over this uh email in detail help because when you understand when there's some mystery that in itself takes a load off frustration if that is what you're having irritation it's like okay i understand it i'm less irritated i understand it. i'm less frustrated so i think that is super important if there's anything you feel like this is still a mystery to me this is still strange i don't understand it please send another email and we'll go over that one um but understanding exam is the most important thing what must i do i want to say if you're still you know if you like getting up at around 11 a.m every day then keep in mind that you may not you may not be sleepy until let's say six what's, what's six hours before 11 that's like you know four four five a.m or something like that so again if you get up at 11 you'll probably start feeling sleepy maybe around four or five that's completely expected and so don't i would say there's no reason to go to bed or think you're going to be sleepy before let's say four or five a.m um if you want to be sleepy earlier then you have to get up earlier so that's i think the most important thing and then and then finally here, here's another important one. Yes, unfortunately, I'm still taking pills. Uh, my, my take on this is that uh, if somebody's taking a pill or using a sleep mask or taking some melatonin or whatever it is, it, it's not a problem unless there's kind of a self-judgment or if you consider it a problem. 
you know, when somebody's taking a pill every day at the same time and doesn't have a second thought about it, doesn't blame themselves, doesn't judge themselves for it, then it's no problem. If somebody doesn't take a pill at all, that's also no problem. But I think it just has to be like um, acceptance. Like either you accept that uh, I'm going to take this pill forever or indefinitely, then it's no problem. Or then, or you decide with your doctor to not take it at all, and there's no problem at all. The problem becomes when there's this kind of judgment and ambivalence. You take it, but you don't want to take it. That that's that's the problem. So, so I think uh, something very important to consider there. All right. So Salima, I, I hope that was helpful to you. Um, we have a, a live question here. Let's see. Um, let's sorry. Let me just fix the screen here. Oh, there we go. Uh, Raka, uh, uh, <laughs> nice, nice to be in touch again. Thanks so much for, for all the support here. So let, let's see here. R uh, Raka uh, uh, um, posted a following comment. Hey, Daniel, I'm struggling quite a bit. Waking up a lot, but no apnea. I did a polysomnography, had a 50% sleep efficiency, low RAM, 12%, deep sleep, 7%. How should I go about improving this? Um, sleep doc was stumped and said, I wake up spontaneously during sleep and just said sleep hygiene and yoga. That has been so bad. This has been so bad over the last few months. All right. So first of all, uh, Rock, I want to say, you know, thanks for staying in touch. And, um, um, the, you know, when when you have trouble sleeping, you naturally want to find out find out find out why, and and many people go through some type of sleep testing, and um, my opinion on this is that sleep testing is very uh, no 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 not at all, Raka. I, I you know I'm just glad you're here, and uh, that's it. I say that because Raka said sorry for the negativity. Not at all. Um, so again, you want to understand why you have trouble sleeping, and then it, it can seem like if you um, investigate like how much REM sleep and slow wave sleep you have and your REM sleep efficiency, et cetera, that those can be clues. But in my, in my, in my thinking, uh, there are no clues at all. They, they're not the, of the slightest importance. Uh, it's somebody said that to think about or ponder or worry about the, um, how much slow wave sleep or REM sleep or stage two sleep you have is kind of like what, worrying about the composition of you know, um, gases in, in, in air, like how much, uh, carbon dioxide, how much oxygen, et cetera. Is there an air, you know, could it be this reason I feel so tired because there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And nobody's ever shown that they really have an impact. In my thinking, they have absolutely nothing to do with insomnia. Absolutely nothing. Insomnia is this, what I, what I have behind me is this, um, very simple model that I, I, I started using, which is like insomnia is this, like when, when you don't have any trouble sleeping, and then your trouble score is like a zero and your desire score is zero. It means you have no trouble sleeping and you don't desire sleep. You're not hoping for sleep, thinking about sleep, pondering sleep at all. It's like a zero, right? Something happens, which is a circumstance, which could be anything, any type of stress. And, um, and then that causes some trouble sleeping. If that doesn't lead to any reaction, then you're fine. But if the trouble sleeping causes like an increase in the desire for sleep, you're wondering why to sleep, you, you're, you question it, you're puzzled, etc then your desire score goes up and then that causes more trouble sleeping. So your trouble score goes up and you have more desire for sleep, more trouble sleeping, more desire for sleep, more trouble sleeping, yada, yada, yada. Now you have insomnia. That's it. There's nothing to do with like sleep stages or sleep efficiency or anything like that. Like there's no clue there. So, uh, um, so, uh, so I think the clue is always about like, how can I quote unquote reduce my desire for sleep? Meaning, understand sleep, not be puzzled by it. And like, you know, like um, that, that is always the key in my, in my opinion. So Rex said, would you say that those results aren't that abnormal and that if I do things to improve and consolidate my sleep, they will get better triggering my health anxiety. You probably know what I mean. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, okay. So this is a good question. Rex is answering, like, if I do things like the things I talk about, like education, et cetera, consolidate my sleep by behavioral modification, et cetera, would those results in improve? Uh, well, I, I, my, my question becomes, what, what is improvement? Meaning th there could be, uh, there's a lot of people out there who have a sleep efficiency of like, you know, 55% and like zero REM sleep and 2% deep sleep that are like, I sleep great. I sleep fantastic. And there are people who have like the most quote unquote perfect, you know, s sleep numbers, like sleep efficiency, 87%, you know, 35% REM sleep, 
30% deep sleep and they feel terrible. So what are the results you're looking for? The results you're looking for, in my opinion, is always to feel great and not worry about sleep. That's the result you're looking for. If you are looking for any type of result that is a number, you are on the wrong path. If you're looking for a result that is a number, you're on the wrong path. You're on the path towards confusion and frustration. I think your results should always be intangible and they should be subjective, always. If you're looking for like an objective and measurable uh, uh, result, you're gonna go towards frustration and confusion. So um, I, I say the only results that matter are how you feel, you know? That's the only result that matters. And if you do what I talk about here, like educating yourself, you know, um, change your thinking, change your reaction, etc. The results that mean anything, which is you being happy and, and enjoying your life and being less anxious, you're going to get those results. Absolutely. Thanks, Raka. <laughs> Thanks, Raka. I hope that helped. Malena is here. Um, she's, she also contributed a live question, uh, question here. Hi, Daniel. So I was watching the video with Tash, and there is a comment by you. Um, you can you can do it. I swear I'm right there, Daniel. It's like I sleep well and then I feel sneak anxiety coming my way. Right after a uh, after a bad sleep coming away. Um, then I have a bad sorry. Then I have bad for one. I feel sleep anxiety of sleep like oh my guys come back. Yeah, I I think that's uh, th Raka. Anytime, Raka said thank you. Here. Um, Oh, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm just try, trying to understand here, Milena. I was watching the video with Tash, and there's a comment by You Can Do It. I swear I'm right there, Daniel. It's like I sleep well, then I feel like sneaking anxiety coming away. Yeah. I think, uh, Milena, I don't know if you've seen it, but I did a, a video uh, recently about what, what I call success regress. And, um, and this is very common, extremely common, that someone is uh, kind of, doing their thought work and, and getting better, but then starts feeling like, could this really be true? Like, can I really be sleeping this well? Or is this real? Or kind of like almost like imposter syndrome. And then just that, just like being puzzled or wondering if you can really sleep this well, eventually creates so much attention to sleep. You know, wonder, can I really sleep this well? Is this gonna go on? I've slept well for four nights. Can it really be a fifth night? Then you start sleeping worse again, right? And, uh, and 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 the, the, the important thing here is that there's nothing strange or unusual about that. That's just success regress. And so um, the key to that, the key uh, to to not having the success regress is actually accepting that you're going to have some success regress. You know, or two things. One is understanding it, so it's not a mystery. And number two, not resisting it. Saying like when that kind of sneaky anxiety comes up, like can can I really sleep well like this? Like is this going to be going on forever? Then the natural kind of reaction is i don't want that what should i do about it but what you have to do is the opposite you have to be like it's okay if i have success regress if i do better for a couple of days and then i have like a step backwards that, that's totally fine i accept that and when you accept that when you're not resisting it or like trying to avoid it then you you only have success no regress <laughs> i hope i got you there Melina. if i didn't understand that then uh, let me know all right so with that said i have a feeling this is going to be a long one this is looking at long one people because we have like four more emails to go over. But anyway, let's let's get right into it. Uh, uh, okay, so the second one here is for um, from Yushan, and the title is "Not Sleeping Enough." All right, hi Daniel. I have five plus hours of sleep now each night, with occasional seven hours recovery nights. Clearly, five hours are not enough for me. But this is the best I've had since I started following your advices from bedtime podcast and YouTube in December 2019. I've had chronic insomnia for over 10 years. Your advices have made a great improvement in my situation. And thank you so much. Hey, that's amazing. I'm super happy to read this, Yushan. And, and again, just like I said to uh, Salima, well done on your end. You know, you've done the hard work. It's amazing. Here is me in the past two months, waking up after exactly five plus hours of solid sleep, and that's it. I so want to believe that's the hours of sleep I need, but I get extremely tired at dinner time and seeming irritable during the day. What can I do? I'm relaxed on bedtime right now, usually between 10, 30, 11, 30. Getting up can be as early as 4 a.m. in the morning. I don't know what to do to have that extra hour to add it. I feel that CBTI helped me falling asleep. Your advice of being passive helped me staying asleep, but something keeps me from sleeping more than five hours, and I don't know what. Thank you for your help. 
Well, Yushan, I want to say, uh, again, well done. And I, I honestly think there's no mystery here. Um, the, I think the key, the key, key, key here is this one, that you, know, you had trouble sleeping for 10 years. And as you started to listening to my teaching, you went from a place of, I'm, I'm guessing here, but I'm, I'm guessing you went from a place of kind of confusion and you were trying a lot. You were trying to figure it out. You were doing a lot of things to sleep which kept you in a place where you slept very little. And then you kind of took a step backwards from that. You were like, okay, I start to understand. I'm kind of trying too hard to sleep, taking a step backwards. I'm doing a little bit less. And then you started sleeping better, right? You sleep, sleep a whole lot better, but you're not quite there where your goal is at. And, and, the, and to be honest with you, I think the, the key to getting to where you want to be is actually just doing what you have been doing, but more of it, meaning like being even more accepting. You know, I, I know it's super hard because we want to reach a goal. We want to do things, but I think the key is the opposite, being more accepting, meaning being like five hours is, is, is fine. It's much better in the past. And if I sleep five hours, that's okay. If I sleep two hours here and there, that's all right too. If I sleep more, that's great, but it's okay if I don't, you know? And then, you know, I totally, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you, you 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 would feel better if you slept more, but again, the more you t the more you look at it is like at like if I slept more, I would feel better. That creates a pressure to sleep, and that keeps you from doing exactly that. So the more you go, yeah, I feel tired, but it's okay. I'm tired, but it'll be all right. I'm uh, you know, even if I don't sleep well, I'll be okay. When you do that, when you start going in that direction then pressure goes down and you sleep sleep more and better. Uh, and, you know, this, um, by the way, I, I, you said here that you wake up after exactly five hours of solid sleep and that's it. I call that a uh, Swiss awakening, you know, uh, when somebody wakes up exactly the same time every night or exactly after the same amount of, of sleep. And there's nothing unusual or odd about that it's just like our circadian rhythm can get into these habits just like you know sometimes if you have an alarm set for 7 a.m then a lot of people say i always wake up like 10 hours before that it's just like your body can get into these habits nothing strange or unusual about that the the one thing i want to add is my classical one my what i always say about like how do you know it's five hours maybe better not check the time you know if you're doing that uh, because the less you check the time, the less you keep track, the better. But I think, honestly, um, uh, Yushana, I would say just like focus on the improvement you had and just try to be accepting. No matter how hard it is, try to be accepting and try not to try not to tr uh, try not to aim for more, and it will come to you. You know, uh, I think that's the key. So Yushan, like, uh, well done, and, and stay in touch, and let me know if any other question comes up. All right. Um, Let's see. Sorry, I, uh, uh, oh, I, uh, I should have shared my screen there, which I forgot. Sorry about that. Um, we have a live question from from Stevo. Uh, I think if I don't remember, I misremember Stevo. We you've been in contact, but it was a while ago. Uh, so anyway, can sleep apnea damage your part for sleeping due to oxygen deprivation of the parts of the brain? Um, you know, good question and. Uh, the short answer in my teaching, my understanding of literature is no, no, absolutely not. Um, it's it's interesting because if if somebody is um, submerged underwater or something like that, you're literally drowning and they get no oxygen to the brain, that can cause brain damage. We all know that. That's, not, that's, that's true. So we kind of have extrapolated from that that if you get low oxygen levels, not that extreme, but if your lock levels are like in the 85% range or 70% range or something for a long time, that could also cause brain damage. No evidence for that, actually, that I'm aware of. I can definitely say this, that studies on sleep apnea are, you know, the, the way we look at sleep apnea has changed a lot in the last few years. And that came after what's called the SAVE study. If anybody wants to look it up, it's, it's SAVE, S-A-V-E, SAVE study. Save, if, you, if you Google like SAVE study OSA or SAVE study CPAP, you'll find it. And what they did in that study was, and it's the only big study on sleep apnea out there where they took like um, 3,000 people that all had a moderate or severe sleep apnea and randomized them so that half of them went on CPAP, half of them no CPAP. And after four years, there was absolutely no difference in health outcomes. 
And there's actually, interestingly, there's some studies that suggest that if your oxygen levels go down at night, that's actually good for you because your, your body produces these kind of collateral vessels to uh, deal with hypoxemia. So you're ready for it if you'd have a stroke or heart attack or something like that. So, um, so the short answer is, is uh, no. Uh, okay. Uh, Lytle says, currently me waking up, feeling exhausted and restless. That night was weird, but I don't care. Let's play some <laughs> video games. You know, I know it's, it's hard to get to where Lytle is, but that's, that's, that's where you want to be. That's definitely where we want to be. All right. Um, Melissa, the comment by a user called, you can do it uh, under the attach video. It explains exactly what I'm coming from, Daniel. Oh, cool. Well, I have to, um, let's see. Well, let, let's do this. So I'll, I'll, I'll pull up my phone here. Let's go to the video with Tash. That's talking insomnia number 24. No, is it? No, that's talking insomnia number 23 here. And you can do it. You can do it says this. I understand how Tash feels as my insomnia is the same, but also different. I always seem to sleep about four hours on a, on a good night. I don't feel like that. Um, that it is insomnia, at least for me, I feel great all day. You know, uh, it's, this is really interesting. I think I know that you can do it is actually, um, I think that's actually Tracy who has a question for actually, yeah, a question for us in this episode, which we'll get to. Um, and uh, I can just very briefly share here with you, Melena, what um, I've, I've pondered this quite a bit. And uh, I've actually uh, had come up with kind of a, word for this, if, yeah, I can share with you guys that I'm working on this document um, where, I, where I'm where i starting to kind of like uh, sy systematically describe a lot of the common themes or insights or common questions or things like that that I, that I, that I get here. And, and what I call this is you hit a wonder wall. I call it a wonder wall. And it, th this goes along with what we talked about earlier, which is like hyper arousal can come from many places. Uh, hyper arousal can come from fear, anxiety. Uh, it can come from frustration. It can come from irritation. It can come from um, excitement. And one one place where uh, that uh, hyper arousal can come from is also wonder, puzzlement, kind of just not understanding. And that's I think exactly what Tracy describes is that she sleeps very very little, and she's she's feeling pretty good during the day. She's not worried about it, but. She's still like puzzled, like why is this happening? And and the key insight there is that it's the puzzlement that's causing the insomnia. So once you just kind of like uh, stop wondering how you can sleep so little and still feel okay, then sleep starts coming your way. So I think that you hit that wonder wall, and and if you just you know let go of the wonder, the puzzlement, then sleep will come your way. So yeah, th thanks, Melina. Thanks so much for that comment. We will uh, move on here with our next, our next question. Uh, where is that here? Let's go over this. So we talked uh, to Yushan here, and and here's uh, uh, an email from Ricardo. Uh, the uh, title was "New Job." Hi, Daniel. Thank you for replying to our emails on your channel. It's so helpful anytime. I, I want to thank you for sending questions. It, that is very, very helpful to me. Um, I would just like to share the following with you. In reality, this email is more to take this out of my chest. I appreciate any, any attention given to it. I'm about to start working in England in, in a week. Uh, I've been in Portugal since January due to lockdown. In my fourth week with CBTI, I've been able to sleep every day. OK, I'm just going to stop here. and. and quickly say when I hear I have been able to that immediately triggers my spidey senses and I want to say it was it was actually thanks to you letting go that you slept better slept more uh, if you think of sleep as an effort as like I've been able to I was successful I managed to etc then um, that's a, that's very very slippery because it's the more you think of it as something you are able to, that the less of it you get. The more you think of it as like, if I just don't think of it as a skill or ability and just let it happen, that's the key. That's when it's gonna come your way, really. Okay, some days I sleep until my sleep window finishes, which is great. Other days I wake up during the night. Those nights I leave bed and some of them I manage to go back to sleep. Other nights, not really. 
but because I did sleep uh, something, I don't make a big deal of it. This this is really, really good. You know, I don't make a big deal of it if I sleep more or less perfect. I think it's super important to say when you sleep more or better, you should be happy. You should be like, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. I can sleep. This is great. But also not be attached to the outcome. Also be like, I'm super glad I slept good today. But if I don't sleep tomorrow night, that's all right. That's going to be okay. Meaning like the less attached you are to the outcome, the better you sleep overall. And that's why I'm so happy to hear this. Like, I don't make a big deal of it. Perfect. But last week I had a couple of nights where I really did not sleep. I think it has to do with the fact that I'll be leaving for England soon. I can't avoid thinking about what is going to happen now that I am going to be by myself. I stay with my mother in Portugal and we'll have commitments in the morning. I keep thinking how much I have struggled with that in the past and I panicked. Today it reached its peak. I don't sleep, but still get out of bed at 6 a.m. as usual. I went to watch TV and my head just started drifting away towards those thoughts again. How am I going to do in England? Is everything going to be okay? At one point I was overwhelmed and I panicked. I decided to go to bed to try to relax. I slept a bit, ended up getting up at only 11 a.m. When I left bed, those feelings were still there, perhaps even worse because I felt bad about staying in bed too long. I went to the living room and I sat there. I couldn't avoid crying. I couldn't avoid crying. My mom was in there and heard me crying. She asked what was going on. I felt such desperation. I felt the need to tell her about my fears about my sleep and that I fear it will get worse and that I'm going to England. Uh, uh, I always kept that to myself, try not to share problems with her, both not to worry her and to make my son a big deal. My mother, in her best will to help me, told me I should go to the doctor and get some sleeping pills. That made me cry even more because I made such an effort to leave the pills in the first place. It really got bad, and I started panicking more and more. The last thing I want to do is make my mom suffer. I've been struggling with the summer for 10 years, and today all the bad memories from the past and all the bad days came to mind. Lately, I was able to enjoy improvements and not think about past events. I know this is such a mental thing, but today I simply broke down. I hope that starting on my new job will help me by giving me a schedule, which I don't have at this point. I'm sorry for the big email. I don't know if sharing this in your channel is a good thing. It's, it's a bit sad. I don't. I think people in the same situation as me don't need that. But if you have some sort of advice for me, I would love to hear it. And you can always reply to this email once you find some time on your busy schedule. Thank you. Um, writing this email was good for me. Well, I, I want to say, uh, Ricardo, um, thanks so much for sharing this. I actually think a lot of people will relate to this. And and that's always good. You know, Whenever you share something that other people will feel, you know what, I went through the same thing. I'm not the only one. That's always helpful. And just, you know, you said writing this email was good for me. Like, Writing can be so therapeutic in itself. So I'm really happy uh, that you felt that way, Ricardo. And you know, I, I think I'm not going to go like line by line here because I don't think that's needed at all. I, I think I want to focus on a, a couple of things. Uh, one is that um, uh, first of all, like you, you've done a lot of good work. Like you've made a lot of progress. And when you have like a setback or some stress or something happens, a lot of people go like, "Oh my gosh." You know, now I've undone all the work I've done. This is terrible. How, you know, what have I done? That self-judgment, being hard on yourself, it's, 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 it doesn't help you. And it's, it's not true at all because understanding education can never be taken away from you. It can feel like it slips away for a while, but you have it. You still got it. And let's say you were on sleeping vacations at some point in the future, you could much easier get off it. Or, you know, you've understood a lot of things. You might not feel the need to get on it or a lot of things. It's like actually just randomly I thought about my friend who stopped smoking. He was like, you know, Daniel, like the key is I've stopped smoking, but I had a cigarette the other day. And I just I don't think of myself as a smoker. I just had a cigarette. And, and it's not like, oh, my gosh, I'm back smoking. Well, now I might as well, I might as well keep smoking. Same thing here. Like, you know, some stress happened. You slept very little. You're anxious. That doesn't mean you've undone a lot of work. It just means that. It just means that you have insomnia because you you have you have some additional stress. And and that was the second thing I was thinking about here is that it is completely expected for you to sleep a little. You're gonna move from where you live. You're gonna move to a new country. Insomnia is completely normal, expected. And and the more you can think of it like that, I'm supposed to have insomnia. Right? It's kind of completely normal under these circumstances that will keep you from starting to like do things to sleep better etc so ricardo i think uh i think you already knew this which you kind of said in your email already but thanks for sharing i hope this helped and uh let us know how things go in england you know it might be 
I'm sure it's going to be tough in the first period of time, but guess what? Like when, once you get into it, you get a new habit. I, I, I'm sure you'll sleep really, really well again. Um, uh, okay, Lytle is here live. Uh, where do we start here? Lytle said, to be honest, though, I once more having this, I once more I'm having this fragment of sleep again, but for some reason I can now effortlessly move away from thinking about sleep. That's that's perfect. I, I think that's because you understand you understand sleep, and you know, even if you have fragment of sleep, you don't react to it. I find myself in some great improvement. For some reason, I can I no longer care about my sleep. I hope this uh, improvement of mine will keep going. You know, um, I, I I think you know when I say when I hear somebody say this, uh, I no longer care about sleep. I know that they've reached a milestone. I know that they reached a milestone. And and secondly, Lytle says, I hope this improvement mind will keep going. You know, it's all in your hands. It's not um, like insomnia has a life of its own. It just kind of resurfaces for no reason. It is when you start paying attention to it, when you start worrying, when you start puzzled, being puzzled and reacting. So like you, I think you know so much, Lytle, that you can easily divert yourself from any such tendencies. So uh, I think uh, you'll sleep well for the rest of your life. And, and you know, if you start having trouble sleeping, just like we said about R Ricardo here, just think of it as like, this is a hiccup and uh, I'm not going to react to it and you'll be doing great again. All right. So um, let's see here. We'll go back to our uh, questions here. And this is actually a follow-up one from, um, from Young. Uh, that uh, I think we answered uh, this uh, the first question from Young uh, Friday with together with Coach Michael. Okay, let's read this. Hello, Daniel. Thank you for your response on the podcast. To give you some additional detail, I set my wake up time at 7 a.m. every day, and with a sleep restriction time of six hours, I've been targeting a 1 a.m. bedtime every night. However, as I mentioned, I typically get drowsy or sleepy before my sleep restriction time of 1 a.m. or around 10:30 or 11 p.m. watching Netflix. According to your book, if I get anxious about the sleep restriction time, I should open up the sleep window and not check the time, let's say after 10.30 p.m. and just go to bed when I feel drowsy or sleepy. The problem with that is then I've been waking up after one to two hours, almost like a nap, around 12 a.m. or 1 a.m., and I can't fall back asleep. I've tried also fighting off sleep until my 1 a.m. sleep restriction time, but then I find that I lose that sleepy feeling if I do something I enjoy, like watching... Uh, an enjoyable Netflix show per your book, or even doing something boring like reading an adult coloring coloring book and start to get anxious about why I'm not getting sleepy, even though it's late. At a certain point, uh, do I even do I go to bed even though I'm not sleepy? Like if it's like 3, 4 a.m. and I and my wake up time is at 7 a.m. or do I risk not getting sleepy, sleep the whole night and just not go to bed, knowing there's a good chance I might be literally up until 7 a.m. wake up time. I want to make long-term progress in defeating my one-year insomnia, but I've been so sleep deprived. It makes short-term sleepless nights have very potent and unpleasant physical symptoms, brain fog, panic attacks, increased blood pressure, nausea, et cetera. I've tried getting early morning sunlight so that it hits my eyes, but I live in Southern California and I've developed a ping in one of my eyes due to long-term sun exposure um, in the past prior to my insomnia battle and don't really want to risk making it worse, but acknowledge that wearing dark sunglasses to protect my eyes kind of defeats the purpose of trying to get early morning sun. Young. All right. Young, uh, uh thanks so much for, for, uh, this follow-up, uh, question. And I, I can see that you've done a lot of homework and, and, uh, and, um, um, and really educate yourself, which is fantastic. Um, I think that for, before we go over this and more like line by not line here, I say I want to say that the 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 key always to getting good sleep is to like move away from the narrative of um, of like the fight uh, and you know why we always have that why so many people say like my bed has become a battle field or I fight with insomnia, I struggle, I try to overcome it, I can't beat it, I don't have any success, etc., is because in our kind of ancient primal, you know, alarm system, uh, the amygdala, it, you know, that part of our brain is there to keep us safe, to identify threats. And uh, when it comes to a real tangible physical threat, like a, a charging grizzly bear, that system works perfect, either you fight or flight, either you attack or you dodge it, you know. Uh, but sometimes that 
alarm system can get confused in our in our lives in the year 2020 uh there aren't that many physical threats like there aren't that many like tigers and panthers and bears and or like warring tribes or like things like that to 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 um fight off or escape from sometimes it gets confused and sometimes it, it, it that alarm system thinks of sleeplessness as a threat and thinks that's the enemy that's the that's the uh thing that's coming at us that's the thing charging at us and we have to either escape it or or fight it off and that leads to a lot of problems because you can't actually fight wakefulness or sleeplessness you can't escape from wakefulness you know you can't beat it or or charge at it or defeat it or anything like that but when you try uh nothing happens you know you you try to fight it but it doesn't get any better and then the brain goes oh my gosh this 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 threat is huge this is going to kill me this is like a real real big problem and therefore you kind of want to battle it more and then it becomes a bigger problem then you want to battle it more and then it becomes a bigger problem so that's kind of that's why we often have this fight battle struggle uh, type narrative when it comes to insomnia and the key is always to disengage disengage from the fight disengage from the battle take away take to take a step back abandon the fight that is always the key uh, so that was kind of my big picture thing and in light of that um you know I, I i sense i sense some effort you know i sense effort here i sense that you you have a certain target that you want to sleep a certain amount of time and you're doing things to kind of try to achieve achieve that and which is completely natural there's no judgment and please don't nobody out there please don't judge yourself for anything you're doing you're trying to get it better but it's tricky so um uh okay let's do the first one i've been targeting a 1 a.m bedtime every night uh, i i think it is good to have a target and i think it's good to have a target of when you get up in the morning so i set my wake up time at 7 a.m every day i think that's good i've uh, i've moved away from what i used to say in the past which is like Kind of keep it very strict like get up exactly 7 a.m no later every morning i think if you if you you know if you i, th I think michael is, has taught me uh something really good about that so if you get up you know within 30 minutes or so of 7 a.m is good like it doesn't have to be exactly that time but you know around 7 a.m get up around 7 a.m it's great now bedtime i think it's good to not have a target uh you know i think it's good to be like i shouldn't go to bed before this time but uh after that the best thing to do is just not know the time. Just go by how you feel. Just don't know the time. I think that is that should that should could work really well for you. So let's say you give yourself uh, ample time. Let's say you say I'm gonna get up at seven, but I'm not gonna get into bed before let's say or not 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 attempt to sleep. Let's say before eleven. That gives you like eight hours to sleep, uh, and and I think that could work really well. But keep in mind, I think it's important not to know the time after uh, let's say 11 you know because when you know the time you always start calculating and it it, it makes you want to track it even more and you get engaged in that fight again uh so i uh you say um i get drowsy or sleepy before my sleep restriction time at 1 a.m or around 10 30 11 so uh, and, and uh, what i'm saying again is like if you would say okay i'm not going to sleep before 11 but not check the time afterwards then you would get around this problem of like uh, i've been waking up after one or two hour hours almost like a nap around 12 or 1 a.m well if you don't know the time it's not as triggering it's like you just wake up and you feel pretty alert but you don't really know it could be 12 it could be one it could be three it could be four it could be you don't really know what it is and you don't want to know you know that's the key and then you uh, you you don't um you know you, you do something at that point that is uh uh you know enjoyable or neutral uh and and you you make that wake up a positive thing you know it sounds kind of crazy but it's important to look forward to going to bed which i think you're doing you're kind of enjoying some netflix before you go to bed perfect you have to find something enjoyable to do when you wake up as well so you look forward to waking up it sounds kind of crazy again but that is the way because when you look forward to waking up you're not afraid of waking up anymore and and again that the fight flight narrative goes away there's nothing fear to be to be worried about you are not scared of anything you know it's okay whatever happens happens you know you abandon the fight super super important um and then it's like i start getting anxious about why i'm not getting sleepy i know it's late i that's completely understandable uh and um uh, and you also said like what should i do should i um 
you know, sh should I kind of stay up if I'm not sleepy and risk uh, not sleeping at all? I think that the, here's the here's the most important thing here is that um, you describe how if you don't sleep at all, you have very important, unpleasant physical symptoms, brain fog, panic attacks, increased blood pressure, et cetera. And again, here, this is not medical advice at all. This is just like, if, you know, general thoughts, general advice. Uh, it's real. Like if you sleep very little, you feel terrible. That is real, no question about it. But if you think of it this way, that I have to get at least a little bit of sleep to not feel this way during the day, then you are pressuring yourself. You are pressuring yourself to get sleep, which is gonna lead you to get less sleep. The more you can move into the direction of like, whatever happens, happens. Even if I feel terrible, then I'm not gonna let the fear of that get in the way of my sleeping well. So I think I think that's the key, you know, it being accepting anything, accepting like if I don't sleep at all, that's all right. You know, it'll be better tomorrow or the following night or something like that. Acceptance is always the key, you know, um, trying to escape like daytime symptoms by making sure you get enough sleep that that creates a lot of pressure. And regarding the early sunlight, uh, you know, <laughs> Mike, Coach Mike, he, he he's a firm believer in that. I personally don't think it's very important. So, um, you know, you can consider that. So, young, you know, I hope this helped. And, and um, if there are any, any confusion, questions, et cetera, please send them again. Uh, it is super important to understand. It's only when you understand completely that you you really start moving in the right direction. So, yeah, with that said, um, we have uh, some live comments here from um, Lytle. He says, before I was stressing myself on thinking about my sleep now, even though it seems like I've only slept for two hours, I now I jump out of bed looking forward to playing Pokemon Go with myself and my friends. Sorry about the mess up. Not at all. That's fantastic. Pokemon Go. That's the, that's, love it. <laughs> Play Pokemon Go. That's awesome. Uh, all right. So we have the last um, question here from Tracy. Let's read this. It's actually a combination. It's actually two emails from Tracy. Uh, the first one uh, 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 starts here. I watched the videos on the five-step method. I'm pretty, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I had said to Tracy to look into that, um, the, 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 the um, playlist I have called the self-coaching model. She said I, she's kind of well-versed in that stuff. I was working with someone on all that, and I got very philosophical. However, I'm aware that only things we can really change are our thoughts. That is extremely important, and Tracy already knows that. That's great. The thing for me is I don't have negative emotions in general, and most always I feel good and happy. I have so much I'm grateful for. My thoughts have been pretty positive at also. I'm going to highlight this. I don't have negative thoughts about sleep except for one thing. The only thing with sleep that really confuses me is uncertainty. This is really important. We're going to highlight this too. There's still so much we don't know about sleep. And my negative thoughts uh, that did jump in once in a while are from what I was told. So what I was told uh, became my beliefs or thoughts. Doctors have told me two hours of sleep isn't okay and I'll get sick and I need pills. I've been told I'm an enigma. This is also super important. Let's, let's highlight this one. Um, because they are doctors, I chose to believe them. And that began my thoughts about myself and sleep. But since then, I've been work. I've worked on thinking for myself and releasing all that garbage. Now I just don't really think about sleep much. But I still wonder if two hours for me is enough. I tend to feel fine the next day, every day. So if I fall asleep at midnight, wake up at two, feeling refreshed, I just get up and start my day. I don't think anything bad about this. I do have negative thoughts about doctors, though. I was given some wrong info and was put on pills when I never should have been and kept on them for thirteen years. That's a long time. There's a new pill out that works on orexin called Davigo, and I don't really want to try it, but really, but I have really done a lot of work on insomnia and even no work. But for whatever reason, I either don't fall asleep or if I do, I wake one to two hours later, and that's it. I just have in mind that it's it can't possibly be enough for me to remain healthy and lively. I'm reluctant to even try it, but if it helped me at this point, I would feel exhausted. Um all that, so why not? I'm reluctant to, to even try it, but if it helped me at this point, I feel I've exhausted all else, so why not? Okay, got it. If it doesn't help reduce my alert system and get my uh, me to sleep better, 
or either I won't take it more than one or two days. But if it does, then maybe it could benefit me. I don't agree to look for external things to help with my internal issues, but if my internal alertness system is overwhelming my sleep drive and I've done all I can to try to help myself, then maybe medication would be helpful. What are your thoughts? Um, okay, so that, that's actually the first email. So let's go over this one. Uh, and um, as I talked about with Melina, uh, it's part of a live question here. Uh, I, I think what, um, Tracy, what, what you hit here is, is what I call a wonder wall. A wonder wall, let me get to that in a second. So first thing I want to say um, is, what I highlight first thing is, you know, I don't have negative emotions. Almost, I'm almost feel good and I'm happy. I have so much I'm grateful. My thoughts are very positive also. So when I read that, the, the first thing that comes to mind is this one that sleep, uh, and this is like it's a little bit of shock, shock uh, maybe to some, some of you hearing this when I say this, is that sleep in itself or getting a certain amount of sleep, I should say, has no inherent value. There's no inherent value in getting seven hours of sleep or six hours or eight hours or two hours or four hours. There is no inherent value in having a certain amount of sleep. It's just like money. There's no inherent value in having a million dollars. The the value of money comes with what you can trade it for. You know, you can trade uh, you can trade money for a lot of things. That's what brings the value. But the money itself is is doesn't have any inherent value. Same thing with sleep. The the value of sleep, in my opinion, comes from what you can trade it for, quote unquote. Meaning, like if you sleep more, if you sleep better, you can exchange that for feeling good, feeling refreshed, feeling happy, you know? Um, so the value of sleep comes from how it makes you makes you feel. Uh, and if you feel good and happy, uh, then I'd say you, you already have everything you want. Like there's absolutely no reason, in my opinion, to try to get more sleep. If you feel good and you're happy, you, you've done it, you're good. There's, there's absolutely nothing else to uh, try to, to obtain more sleep for. And I understand what you said that, um, you know, that doctors have said, if you don't get enough sleep, you, 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 you know, they're concerned, you're an enigma, et cetera. Most people don't understand sleep. I've written a whole book called why we don't sleep about how, you know, the only thing that happens if you sleep little is that you feel really tired. You know, there's never been anything else. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Nobody's ever shown that there are any negative health consequences that are caused by little sleep. And now the other thing I highlight here was like, what really confuses me is uncertainty. And I've been told that I'm enigma again. I still wonder if two hours for me is enough. And this is where that wonder wall thing comes for me. Uh, so insomnia is um, caused by hyperarousal. Hyperarousal again is this uh, heightened level of alertness. Uh, and many things can trigger that hyperarousal. One of them is wonder, puzzlement, uncertainty, just, just kind of like being, being, kind of confused being like why is it that i sleep so little you know just wondering why you sleep so little is enough to cause hyperarousal that makes you sleep little you know so i think that there's no mystery there at all i think uh, you have hit a wonder wall and um uh then we can move on to questions about medications uh i i'd say again like if you're feeling good what do you have to what benefit could you have from sleeping more there's absolutely nothing less, you know, I, I don't think there's anything to, to, to win. Um, and, uh, what I also thought about is like, if you, if you have this, like you hit this wonder wall and you're sleeping very little, but you feel good, then the only problem in my mind that you have is kind of a, a time management uh, challenge. You know, you have 20 plus hours on your hands to do something with, and, and it can be challenged to fill them with something that's fun and meaningful and, and brings joy. But I think that is the key, you know? Just finding things that you really enjoy when you're awake to make wakefulness a permanent pleasure, you know? All it seems like it is, but, you know, to take away from the kind of wandering, uh, you could just uh, feel, feel like, fill the time with things that you love. I think that's the key. And then um, we have the second part here, which uh, goes as follows. I know you said you'd reply tonight, so I do think I'm a short sleeper, but I am a short sleeper, sleeper with insomnia. So my normal two to three hours make me feel just fine, but I have trouble falling asleep most always. I also don't sleep many nights. Last night, for example, I started out in bed. I was reading. My eyes got so heavy. I couldn't keep them open. I put the book down and turned over on my side immediately. 
heart start, starts pounding and I'm awake and, and uncomfortable. When I read that, I'm thinking maybe there is a little bit of, um, maybe there is a component of anxiety here too, though. Maybe, you know. Anyway, so I get out of bed, went to the couch, listened to a documentary, was not sleepy, but because it was so late, I figured I'd try to get back to bed. Again, same thing happened, get out of bed and was on the couch the rest of the night. I feel like I totally understand the set it and forget it on an intellectual level and rationally, it makes sense to me. But I seem to get this extra adrenaline surge and being a short sleeper already means that when I get bad insomnia, it's zero sleep for many nights often. I have so many questions, but basically after doing CBTI for 11 weeks with absolutely zero results, I'm not sure what to do anymore. I have been up for days even doing CBTI with the thought that one night I'd be so deprived, I'd just fall asleep fast. It's never happened, not even once. And I've never crashed. I've always had only one to three hours uh, during the 11 weeks every single night or zero often. I'm active in the day, not for sleep purposes, but because I have obligations and I don't have a choice, but I enjoy the daytime. Um, every single night is a struggle. It's been so over a year. It almost feels traumatic when nights arrive and I just don't know how to keep, uh, to feel so happy and calm. To me, I think I'm calm and not anxious, especially when on the couch, but deep inside, I know I'm upset and frustrated because this has gone on for so long. And even when I do things to distract myself, I'm still just staying up all night and it doesn't feel good the next day or the next or the next. I don't know how to get past it. If I recognize that I feel anxious, I know uh, to trace it back to the thoughts and I know what the thoughts are. They're always the same. However, even when I change the thoughts deep down, I guess I'm not really convincing myself of the new, more positive thought because I'm still anxious. How do I convince my own mind to stop being so stubborn and change the thought enough so that the emotion changes too? I feel really stuck. It's been 13 months of this and I have felt at times I've just let go and do whatever, but I still don't sleep. Getting sleep is something I rarely feel. And no matter how tired I feel, I may or may not get some sleep. Seems to be very random. Thanks, Daniel. Really struggling here to get past all this and move on. Totally get it. And uh, when we read the second email, uh, Tracy, it has a different, um, it has a different, um, like the, the, the message is a little bit different. In this message, we do hear about some frustration, something of a struggle, um, and, and also a lot of insight, like identifying the thoughts behind the emotions, trying to work on them, but it hasn't really stuck. So uh, I, I think, um, I, I still think that the, it, you know, when it comes to insomnia, like, you know, talking about the set it and forget it, um, Set it is like understanding why you have trouble sleeping and forget it is like moving away from it and not paying any attention. So when we read the second part here, um, actually the first part too, it's it's both a, there you are kind of in the set it stage, meaning you have not completely understood why you have trouble sleeping. Although in the second one, we do hear some frustration, maybe it's anxiety. So it may, may actually be there. Um, so, I'm thinking that you know, kind of two things are going in my head now, and probably because there were like these two emails. One email, one thing, one way is, you know, um, j j you know, just taking that approach of like I've I've tried for eleven uh, months to do this uh, doing CBTI and it hasn't helped, and and just going in the direction of like. I'm not going to wonder anymore. I'm just going to do time management. I'm just going to find things to do for 20 some hours that I enjoy and, and stop wondering why I can't sleep. I think that's great. And the second, the second, uh, you know, in the second email, I would say there that, you know, you can't get the, 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 the new thoughts to stick. That means you don't really believe them, which means in my mind that you've taken you, you've taken a too, you've tried to take a too big of a step. And for those of you who are kind of wonder what I'm talking about here is I think, I think uh, if I understand you correctly, Tracy, you know about like uh, thought work and you, and you've tried to build a thought ladder. You try to go from like a goal thought to uh, from a problem thought to a goal thought. And when you, you try to take a step, but it's not really sticking, you don't quite believe it. Then that means you've taken a step that's too, too far of a step. You have to, find kind of a bridging step in between the bridging steps, if you will, a smaller step, because it's only when you fully believe the step that you can move forward. So if you take, if you have taken a, a little step and you're like, 
you know, I, I don't, when you say the step, it's like, you know, you, you, your thought, let's say your problem thought is I can't sleep and your goal thought is like, I have no problem sleeping, something like that. And you're taking the step like, I can sleep well sometimes. Let's say that was your first step. And you say that I can feel well sometimes and you and you just feel some anxiety, like a tingle inside. And then you know that you can't take that step. You have to take a, a smaller step. And that step could be like um, sleep can happen, you know, sleep can happen or something very, very small step like that. And when you say like sleep can happen and you feel like that's true, I believe that that's your first step, you know, and you slowly build steps towards your goal thought. So that that I think is is uh, really really a good way to go. So yeah, that's Tracy. Like uh, I am, um, uh, please let me know what you think about this. And um, you know, if you want to be a common podcast guest, then I'll be super happy having you as well. Uh, all right. So with that said, um, I want to thank everyone for uh, tuning in. And I don't know if you see it behind me. There's a new book there. That is, uh, I believe, a really really good addition to. The resources that we have available to us <laughs> it's in my book i'm going to talk about it tomorrow but um until then thanks so much for tuning in and uh, i'll see you back uh, very soon until then